Warriors level lineup to compete in the Olympics this year for their men's basketball team. We've got some of the biggest names in the game, such as LeBron James, Kevin Durant, uh, Stephen Curry, Anthony Davis, Joel Embiid, all representing Team USA this year. And thus far, they have played eight games. We had the five friendly exhibition matches, and then after that, we moved into our three groups stage games. Uh, the USA is competing in Group C this year, uh, facing off against teams such as Serbia, Germany, and Puerto Rico. So after the eight games they have played thus far, we're going to take a quick peek at who the best performers have been, uh, what all the starting lineups have been, and just see, get a general sense of how the team is doing heading into their quarterfinals game against Brazil. First matchup that we saw from Team USA was a game, a friendly match against Canada. And in this game, we saw the United States roll out with a starting lineup of Stephen Curry, Drew Holiday, Devin Booker, LeBron James, and Joel Embiid. Uh, you'll notice that there are three guards in the starting lineup, which is a little bit of a strange decision. Uh, having, you know, big, big stars come off the bench got options such as Jason Tatum, Anthony Davis, Anthony Edwards, uh, Bam Adebayo. So you're probably asking yourself, why in the world would they go with three guards? And it was just to match up against the guard-heavy Canadian roster. On the flip side, we had the Canadians starting Archie Barrett, Dylan Brooks, Dwight Powell, Shea Coaches Alexander, and Jamal Murray. So between Murray, Alexander, and Barrett, they also had three guards of their own. And I think Team USA was just looking to match them up in that regard. In this game, the USA would walk away victorious with a final score of 86 to 72. Uh, pretty low scoring, but obviously it's not a regular NBA game. You know, you've got 10 minute quarters, the rules are different, it's not as a high stakes, high flying affair as a regular NBA game. And each player plays significantly less minutes, probably more around. 18 minutes rather than the 30 that you would average in an NBA game. So, in this one, we had the United States being led by... Alright, it doesn't look like the official USA basketball page likes to post how many points each person was scoring. So, I'm just going to read out their numbers and we can add them up. So, in this game, the field goal leader, it looks like, was... Drew Holiday for Team USA Men's uh, off of the starting lineup and off the bench we had Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards going 6 of 10 from the floor whereas Drew Holiday went 5 of 8. Uh, it looked like Ant-Man was 5 of 8 from 2 point range and 1 of 2 from 3. So that's what 10 points plus 3 points, that's 13 points. And he didn't make any free throws. Whereas Drew Holiday was 8 points, 11 points. Yeah. So, we've got Anthony Edwards being the leading scorer after one game, and I think one of the most interesting aspects of game one is the plus minuses. Uh, you have multiple starters on Team USA finishing with a negative plus minus, uh, with LeBron James having a minus three, Joel Embiid having minus four, Stephen Curry having minus three, and the team leading plus minus uh, for Team USA was actually Tyrese Halliburton off the bench with a plus minus of 17, followed by Anthony Davis with 15, and Jason Tatum with 14, and Bam Adebayo with 14. So the bench was really killing it in this game. Um, we had the leader in, you know, a field goal made. Let's take a look at the leader in rebounds. Looks like Team USA was led by Anthony Davis, who had 11 rebounds, and in the assist category, it went to the assist king himself, Tyrese Halliburton. Uh, Halliburton also had four steals, which was the most on the team, uh, followed by LeBron, who had three, and Anthony Davis had four blocks, which is very impressive uh, in terms of personal foul. Uh, yes, I do remember that Joel Embiid was drawing a lot of attention in this game because he was getting outmatched by Dwight Powell. Uh, and he, I think, managed to foul out with like six minutes left in the third quarter. So not a good showing by Joel Embiid whatsoever. He fouls out with the five foul 
is because Olympic basketball, there's a hard count of five instead of six. And yeah, uh, nonetheless, the U.S. was able to prevail uh, and be victorious. And we got some great photos and moments out of it, like Stephen Curry, I think, hitting a pose after a layup. I believe this is also the game with a lob uh, between Curry and LeBron. So lots of great moments. With that, we move into the second game of the friendly exhibition games. And this was a matchup between the United States and Australia. Uh, and it was a close one, a nail biter at the end. The U.S. ends up winning by just six points with a final score of 98 to 92. Australia did not go away without a fight. They were down quite a bit and then they rallied to come back and eventually the USA, USA was able to put it away. Um, and in this game, we saw a very different starting lineup led by Stephen Curry at the one. Then we had Anthony Edwards as the starting shooting guard. Uh, Jason Tatum starting at the three, LeBron at the four, and Joel Embiid at the five. And this is more of like probably what you were expecting to see from the starting lineup of the USA, uh, especially with KD still out at this point. And in this one, it looks like our leader in field goal made was Anthony Davis going six of 12 from the floor. He had five two pointers made and one three pointer made, so that adds up to 10 points plus three points is 13 points, and he also made four uh, free throws. So 10 plus three plus four is 17. He should be our leader in that one. Nine, 12. No, Devin Booker had 19 uh, because he made seven free throws, shot seven free throws and made all seven. Okay, so Devin Booker was our leading scorer in this one for Team USA. It looks like, um, yeah, I'm just doing some quick math. Nine, 30, yeah. And then in terms of who was leading in the rebound category, that would be Anthony Davis as well, finishing with 14 rebounds, uh, seven offensive rebounds and seven defensive rebounds. That is a, you know, a board party, if I do say so myself. Uh, in terms of the assists, we have Jason Tatum leading the way, surprisingly. Uh, I don't think of all the, team, the players on Team USA, I would pay Jason Tatum uh, to be the leading assist guy. Plus, anywho, uh, in this matchup, it looks like we had all of our players lock their minutes, minutes with Derek White being a DNP. And in terms of plus minus, it seems that it was a two-way tie. Uh, yet again, the starters not being positive. You've got Jason Tatum finishing with minus one, LeBron James finishing at minus three, uh, Joel Embiid being positive at plus two, but Anthony Edwards and Stephen Curry both being at minus three apiece. Uh, the positive finishers were all from the bench, and leading the way was Devin Booker with plus nine, and Tyrese Halliburton with plus nine. So, there you have it. Uh, on the Australian side of things, let's just take a peek. Who was falling out for them? It looks like their leading shot maker was Jock Landale. Landale going 9 of 12 from the field, finishing with 16 plus 3, 19, 20 points, 20 points for Jock Landale, and I'm pretty sure that Giddy had a pretty solid game as well, uh, yeah, Giddy's stuffing the stat sheet with 8 rebounds and 7 assists, um, so yeah, that game, it got close in the end, you also have Patty Mills. Patty Mills is like phenomenal for Team Australia. You know, one of the best to ever do it in terms of Olympic basketball. He is above Kevin Durant in how many points he has scored. I think he's like number seven all time in points scored in terms of Olympic basketball. Uh, but he was abysmal. 18 worst, minus 16 for Team Australia, shooting just 25% from the field. Um, and. Uh, five turnovers, so a rough showing for Patty Mills, but with that, we move on into our third matchup of the friendlies for Team USA. This was a matchup against the Nikola Jokic-led Serbian team. Uh, in this game, I believe it took place in Abu Dhabi, and so in this one, we see yet another new starting lineup. We have 
Anthony Davis are clearly outplaying him. Joel Embiid does not look that great. Um, and Anthony Davis looks phenomenal. Bam, Bam, and AD on the floor together were really good in those first two games, and going forward as well. But, yeah, Steve Kerr kept rolling out with Joel Embiid in the starting lineup. That was just his decision. And then, yeah, in terms of leaders on this day, we have Team USA being led by Stephen Curry in the points category. He finished with 24 points, making six threes in this game. He went six of nine from three-point range and made two free throws and two two-point shots. Team U. 
USA. Allowing them to narrowly escape one of the most humiliating losses they would have suffered. In this game, we saw the return of an old starting lineup with Steph Curry, Devin Booker, Drew Holiday, LeBron James, and Joel Embiid being our starting five. Um, they all finish in the positive with the highest plus minus going to Drew Holiday and Joel Embiid at plus 15. Uh, in terms of scoring, I believe this one goes to LeBron. Yes, he was our leader in field goals made with 10. He was 8 of 11 from 2 point range, 2 of 3 from 3 point range, made 3 free throws. So that's 16 points plus 6 points is 22 points plus 3 is 25 points for LeBron James. Uh, he also led all of the Team USA basketball players in assists with 7 assists. Uh, and then in rebounds, looks like Anthony Davis led the team with 11. And then as far as plus minus goes, uh, the entire bench was negative, with Anthony Edwards being the worst, along with Anthony Davis at minus 14 apiece. Uh, KD still is not back yet. And in the starters, all positives, Drew at plus 15, LeBron at plus 6, Joel Embiid at plus 15, Devin Booker at plus 14, Curry at plus 6. So, could have been bad, could have been a nightmare, but they do just fine. Uh, and taking a peek at South Sudan, it looks like their best in this game was while, uh, plus 14. There. I don't know if this is their center or not. Uh, but Carlyke Jones, Carlyke Jones went 7 of 21 from the floor, took the most shots by far, um, finished with 14, 15 points, uh, it seems like Mario Shyok, he went, oh no, yeah, Carlyke Jones, I remember hearing about him because he went off for a triple-double, um, had 11 rebounds, 11 assists, and yeah, absolutely like wheeled his way to almost a victory for South Sudan against these Avengers of the United States. So a big statement came from him and yeah you have to commend their effort South Sudan against all odds. Almost stunned at the best nation in basketball. So you have to tip your hat to um, Luo Dang and Wen Young Gabriel and everyone out there in South Sudan grinding away at the opportunity to play here and they even by losing the shock waves that they sent you could tell like their impact was made so great great game from them and then after that we move into our fifth and final friendly matchup exhibition matchup for the united states this was a game against germany Germany, obviously a very fierce competitor, winning the FIBA World Cup last year, led by Dennis Schroeder and Franz Wagner. Uh, in this game, we saw the same starting lineup, Steph Curry, Drew Holiday, Devin Booker, Joel Embiid, and LeBron James, with no KD back yet again. In this one, our leading scorer, once again, was LeBron, with 8 of 11 from the floor. He went to 6 of 9 from 2 point range, 2 of 2 from 3 point range, absolutely on fire. Uh, tacking on 2 free throws on top of that, so we've got like 12 points plus 6 points is 18, finishing with 20 points, 6 rebounds, 4 assists. Um, our rebound leader in this game was Joel Embiid with 8, and then our assist leader was also Joel Embiid with 5 assists. Big man can pass the rock, uh, which is quite surprising because Joel Embiid is not really known for his passing. I think that he has pretty poor assist numbers for someone who scores as much as he does. Um, in terms of plus minus from this matchup, our highest off the board was actually Stephen Curry with a plus 12 on his uh, minutes on the ground. He did not shoot particularly well in this game, going only 5 of 13 from the floor, uh, 1 of 7 from 3 point range, but he still finished plus 12. The bench was mostly negative in this one, with the only positive finishers being Anthony Edwards at plus 3 and Bam Adebayo at plus 2. Oh, and I guess
as Anthony Davis had plus one, and the worst off the bench being Derek White at minus five. But yeah, uh, USA wins another one, 92 to 88. Very close game once again. And once again, it was a LeBron James masterclass. He stepped up in the fourth and just back to back games of them trailing, riding on LeBron's coattails to victory. I believe it was after one of these games that Anthony Edwards dropped his coat and he was like, yeah, we kind of just. LeBron James is the reason why we were uh, on the German side of things. You know, they battled hard, they played well. You've got Franz Wagner. Seven rebounds, four assists, with three steals. So he was battling it out. And Schroeder, uh, a bit more quiet in this one. Franz Wagner actually finished with a positive plus minus at plus one. And it was Isaac Bonga off their bench being the worst for the German team with a minus 13. So the USA managed to win by four points, and with that, they win all five of their friendly matchups. They head into the group stage, being at a 5 and all record, and this is significant because, you know, obviously you want to have a good showing before you start your games. You want to have your lineups and your rotations kind of figured out. Um, and then, yeah, and just legacy things like Steph Curry in Olympic basketball has never dropped a game. He's only played in FIBA World Cup games. This is his first Olympics, but any game that he has been a part of Team USA, he has never lost. So, kept that streak alive. We head into our first game of the group stage, and this one is a rematch against Serbia. This time, with the stakes, you know, the way group matchups work, you have four teams per group, um, and only... I know that the top advances. I actually don't know about the wild cards, how the other teams advance, but the top finisher in each of the groups is for sure advancing in their three groups. So Team USA has to play these next three games against Serbia, Germany, and Puerto Rico to determine if they're going to advance into the quarterfinal stage. So the first game against Serbia massive blowout victory. They win with a final score of 110-84. to 84. Uh, A very new starting lineup for Team USA in this one. Wait. No, no, never mind. Never mind. I'm wrong. I'm mixing my games up. Uh, same starting lineup. Steph Curry, Devin Booker, Drew Holiday, LeBron, and Joel Embiid. The same starting five that we've seen game in and game out. The real talking point in this one was Jason Tatum and Tyrese Halliburton, DNB. Jason Tatum did not play a single minute in this game. It obviously was a blowout victory, so can you really question the decision making when you win by 26 points? But you can just see Jason Tatum is on the sidelines, kind of like disgruntled, just because, uh, like, reportedly he took it fine and everything was okay. And when he was asked about not playing in that game, he was like, you know, after winning the NBA Finals and uh, being on Sports Illustrated and then being the, you know, cover of 2K, it was just a very humbling experience. And, you know, all jokes aside, it's funny as balls. It was just so funny that Jason Tatum did not play in this game. Um, so, yeah, in terms of leading scores, I think that once again went to LeBron James. started this game off with back-to-back -back dunks, I'm pretty sure. He went 9 of 13, 8 of 10 from 2-point range, 1 of 3 from 3-point range. Uh, that gets him 16, 19, plus 2 free throws, 21 points. He also has 7 
plus minus except for one and that would be Joel and Bede who finished at a minus eight and yeah that'll be significant going forward another key thing to pay attention to in this one um, actually yeah probably the biggest story outside of LeBron playing great in the double dunks and Jason Nate I'm not locking anything was the return of Kevin Durant Kevin Durant is the USA's all-time leader in points in rebounds when it comes to Olymp Olympic basketball playing off the bench he was perfect in the first half uh, in terms of scoring he ended up with I think he was actually the leading scorer in this game he finished at 8 of 9 from the field uh, going 3 of 4 from 2 point range and 5 of 5 from 3 point range so that's 15 points plus 6 points is 21 and he shot through 2 free throws so he finishes with 23 points on a near perfect game uh, and yeah they're absolutely killing them at halftime so welcome back to Team USA Kevin Durant and then after that we move into our second group stage game this was the USA uh, against South Sudan so this is a rematch with South Sudan obviously last time it was cutting it very close too close for comfort you have to ready up and do better this is where we changed our starting lineup Team USA does not go with the same old same old we finally moved to well and to the bench we've got Stephen Curry, Devin Booker, Jason Tatum LeBron James and Anthony Davis at the five Joel Embiid finally gets booted off as many people were hoping and praying for uh, and in this game we have the USA winning 103 to 86 but the starters did not fare all that well um, you know, with them getting a lot of help from Bam Adebayo off the bench and Kevin Durant off the bench uh, Kevin Durant in this game though he did not shoot as well as his first game, going two of five from the field, uh, all of three on two pointers, two of two from three, uh, but he did sink eight of nine free throws, and was a team high plus 26 in this matchup. Uh, his peers on the bench, Bam Adebayo plus 22, Derek White plus 18, Anthony Edwards plus 18, uh, our leading field goal maker looks like Bam Adebayo. 8 of 10 from the field, 6 of 7 from 2 point range, 2 of 3 from 3 point range, so that gives us 12 points plus 6 points is 18 points, yeah he finishes with 18 points, uh, Bam is also tied for leader in rebounds, we have Anthony Davis, LeBron James, and Bam Adebayo all finishing with 7 rebounds in this game, uh, and Devin Booker leading in the assist category with 6 assists but yeah uh, this is another matchup where the starters finished mostly on the negatives you have actually the team worst plus minus went to LeBron James in this game at minus seven followed by Anthony Davis at minus five Jason Tatum at minus four and Stephen Curry at minus two the only starter finishing with a positive plus minus being Devin Booker at plus nine Honestly, it doesn't mean anything. It's just they play the most minutes. They start out the game and they're very stacked. So when the bench comes in, they completely outdo all these other teams. But it goes to show that like they weren't dominating immediately in this one. And after that, let us move into oh, I forgot with Serbia uh, in the group stage match against Serbia. There was a very cool stat. Um, Nikola Jokic finished at plus minus of zero when he was on the court Serbia was like wait was it zero let me just fact check what I'm saying yeah yeah zero everyone else on his team was negative they lost by 26 points but when he was on the floor they were dead even like he, he could go toe to toe with the Avengers but in like the ninth minutes that he sat, or how many minutes did he sit? He played, he played 30 minutes, yeah, in like the 9 minutes and 15 seconds that he sat, they got a squad like 29 to 3, um, so Team Serbia just cannot keep up with the others on Team USA, but Jokic could, 
questions like a champ, I think that the players are doing a good job of not reacting poorly to being benched. And honestly, it's just extra rest for them. And it, when you're winning by leaps and bounds over the other team, can you really be upset that you're not playing? I think it's fine. Like, we're all going for gold, right? Uh, I'm saying we as if I'm part of the team. Dang. <laughs> about the glory of winning gold and more about the humiliation of not winning gold when you think about every single player on Team USA is a like, not only a basketball player but like a star if you lose this it is a sh it's sheer embarrassment you have Curry, KD, and LeBron all on the same team like this is an OP lineup of legends there's no way you can come back a basketball recap for you. Uh, stay tuned on Tuesday for the next stage. I'll probably do a full recap once all of the rounds are over and we see who medals. Um, I think the most fun question is to think about who they will play in that last matchup. We've got like some good teams. You know, Canada, very competitive team. You've got Dylan Brooks. You've got RJ Barrett, RJ Barrett leading the way, really. Uh, and then Shea goes just Alex Jr., uh, Jamal Murray. Pretty good lineup that they've got. You've got France with their two seven footers and Rudy Gobert and uh, Ramin Yama and uh, other key NBA players like Nick Batum, Evan Fournier, and then uh, Germany, who was the top dog in FIBA World Cup last year, led by De Dennis Schroeder, uh, Franz Wagner. So, of all these teams, they could. You know, makes it up, make it interesting. Uh, Serbia, not, not so much. I think like, yeah, they've got Jokic, but they don't have anyone else. Um, I don't know how the bracket actually works. I'll have to take a look at it to see who the team USA could even end up in a final match against. But I have a strong feeling Team USA will be in that last game, and I have faith. As always, thank you for watching. If you enjoy content like this, feel free to like, comment, or subscribe. I'll be putting out more videos as the weeks go on. Uh, and yeah, thanks for watching.